in our gospel today, our Lord is making light of the customs of the Jews, how they had all of these customs and practices and all these external things they did. And then our Lord goes into the litany of the things that defile a person. It's not the cup or the way that you washed your hands that defile a person, it's what comes from within. And he gives a list of 13 things, but we could add to that list. Um, he says evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly, smartphones, social media. You fill in the blank. Right, what creates the opportunity, and I wanna take this and I'm gonna break from the scriptures, I'm gonna break from this list and I wanna go into kind of a, a, a a, a question that I want to ask in the context of do we, re, do we keep God's commandments as our priority or do we cling to human traditions? And I want to base a question to us today to determine that. Are we American Catholics or are we Catholic Americans? Are we American Catholics or Catholic Americans? What is the difference? If we're an American Catholic, my American identity, my citizenship, my life here on earth, my political views, my, um, the things I enjoy, those things kind of dictate the way that I live my Catholic identity. Catholicism just becomes one thing among many among my American ident identity. But if I am a Catholic American, my citizenship here on earth as an American is animated by my citizenship in heaven, by my virtue, by my repentance, by my honoring God first, by recognition of the world that we find ourselves in. An American Catholic will walk around in lukewarmness saying, eh, it's good, we just have to say our prayers. Um, you know, I know things are tough, but God's in control where the Catholic American says, no, things are not okay. Things are actually terrible. Souls are falling into hell readily. This list that our Lord gives is what many in our culture today hold forth as virtuous. Picking and choosing and, and living out this list. I mean, in our, in our culture today, there were so many things. I started to make a list, and, and I stopped halfway through. I'm not going to go through my list of, of the junk that, that I was preparing just to kind of enumerate because it just gets so big and it gets so dense. You're familiar. You watch the news. You know what's going on. We're at war. This is not my observation. This is what sacred scripture tells us. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17 the scripture reads, and again, Revelation 12, it starts with the woman clothed with the sun, the moon and the stars under her feet, gives birth to the child, the devil tries to devour the child, a great war breaks out in heaven, Michael casts down Satan and one third of the angels, and then they pursue the woman, the earth comes to the woman's rescue, and then Revelation 12 verse 17 says this, then the devil, become, the devil became angry with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and bear testimony to Jesus. Those who bear testimony to God and keep the, I'm sorry, those who bear testimony to Jesus and keep the commandments of God are children of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So for us, Mary is our mother. What about the Baptist down the street or the Church of Christ or the Happy Clap Clappy Church down the road? They have a mother they've never met. But it is clear in the scriptures that the devil has made war on you. And we don't avoid war by saying, I don't want to play war today. Nope, I'm not going to play war. I'm not going to, nope, I'm not going to play war. No, when someone declares war on you, they're coming after you. One of the mottos in the military is that we never want to have a fair fight. We always want to have the advantage. And the devil takes that same mentality. He's going to look for every way to destroy your soul 
and to destroy your life. So we have to recognize that yes, the church is a ship, but it is a ship under siege and it is a warship for us to fight not only for the salvation of our own souls, that of our family and that of our community and even those souls of our enemies. We want all. And that's what I love about being a Catholic. We want to win. We don't want to just win. We want to dominate. And that we need that fire in our hearts to say, what is it going to take today? You know, we'll, we'll make these little comments at table and, and we have breakfast in silence. And, and uh, when breakfast will end every now and then, one of the brothers will say, good morning, Father, how are you? And I'm like, I'm exhausted from saving souls this morning. I'm like, let's go, let's go. Let's get our game face on today. And I say it jokingly, but I mean it. What can we do to save souls now? What can we do to save souls today? Well, my job right now is to do the dishes. So I'm gonna do these dishes for the salvation of souls. I'm gonna clean this plate as if I'm wiping the souls off of a soul, washing, washing sins off of a soul. Again, how do we implore the spiritual weapons of prayer, fasting, almsgiving? Are we in the fight? My brothers and sisters, I submit to you, if we just live a willy-nilly Catholic existence of prayer, fasting, almsgiving, penance, if we just do these things haphazardly, we're not in the fight. We're, we're there, we're helping out a little bit, but we're not actively engaging the enemy, taking back ground and driving back the forces of evil. We need plans to do this. If you wanna lose weight, if you wanna gain muscle, if you wanna grow in a particular hobby or, or uh, skill set, you develop a plan to learn, you develop a plan to practice, and you develop a plan to execute. So what is your daily plan of prayer? As a Catholic American, we all should have a daily plan of prayer that we follow. What does God expect you to pray every day? And are you putting that time of prayer as your priority, right? We always say we wanna give God our best. Some of you wake up and you're morning people and praise God for you people. You, you wake up in the morning, you're like, good morning, God. And as Father Jewel Itona once preached, he said, then there's the rest of us who wake up and look up to heaven and say, good God, it's morning. All right, when is your best time? When can you give God your best? But even in the morning, those of us who are not morning people, how do we still get on our knees and work when we don't wanna work, work when we don't feel like it? Pray, right? What sacrifices can we make? Do we have a plan for penance, a plan for fasting? You know, this is one of the things in the church that we don't talk about. I'm part of the Make Fasting Cool program. Uh, this, I made that up, sorry. Um, but, you know, do we fast? And when I talk about fasting, I mean like going out without food for a day, doing one meal a day. Some of these things you have to work up to. But do we take fasting as a spiritual weapon seriously? You know, if I could point towards one message in the church for you to look at this week, and I want to encourage each of you to do this, is to look up the message of Fatima. EWTN created a website dedicated to the 100th anniversary of Fatima. So if you go home and Google search 100 year anniversary of Fatima, EWTN, you'll find this website and it's a fantastic website. And it goes through and I want to encourage all of you and your children to read the message of Fatima. Because this message I'm giving you is effectively the message that Our Lady of Fatima gave to the children ages seven, nine, and 10. And not only did she give them the message to a seven-year-old, a nine-year-old, and a 10-year-old, she also showed them hell. The reality that souls are falling into hell, she said souls fall into hell like snowflakes fall in heaven because there is no one to pray and offer sacrifice for them. You know, the message of Fatima started off in 1916. Mary appeared in 1917 but it started with the angel of peace appearing to the children, where he gave them the prayer, my God, I believe, I hope, I adore, and I love thee. I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. 
And he taught them this prayer to say often. And so we should take this message of Fatima to heart. Do we memorize that prayer? And do we say it often? Or make up your own version of it. Lord, I love you for those who don't love you. Right now, in those small moments of your life, you can just make those small little inspired prayers. Later that summer of 1916, the angel of Portugal appears. And his appearance to them, he said, what are you doing? Pray, pray, you need to pray. You need to offer your sufferings and sacrifices to God most high. He said this, in every way offer sacrifice to God in reparations for sins which he has offended. In this way, you will bring peace to our country. If we have a culture, if we develop a Catholic American culture of offering sacrifice and self-denial and offering up reparation for all of the ways that God has offended, this group right here, we can bring peace to this country. We need not look anywhere else. Look around us. We're the warriors. We're the soldiers. We're the ones to engage the enemy, push him back, and restore peace through prayer and sacrifice. This is the great gift that God has given us. Again, in 1916, later in autumn, the third angel appears, giving them the most holy trinity prayer. Again, it's a longer prayer, and it's worth learning and committing to memory. He, the angel also says, after teaching them that prayer, will you offer yourselves to God and bear all of the sufferings he sends you in atonement for sins that offend him, for the conversion of sinners? So the angel asked them to offer perpetually sacrifices for the atonement, to, for atonement for sins and for the conversion of sinners. And then say the rosary every day. The rosary will bring peace to the world and end to the war. We want to end this pandemic. We want to end this global manipulation of our political leaders. We need to pray the rosary every day. This is the message of Fatima. This is the message of our faith, is that prayer and sacrifice is what changes the course of world events. It's Mother Mary that is leading us. She is our commander. She is, the, she is on the front lines of the front lines. And so the question is, is are we going to sit back in the back or are we going to get to work? Are we going to go to war? Are we going to wake up every day and say, my soul is more important than anything else. And not only my soul, but those I love and even those I hate. My brothers and sisters, the reality of the message of Fatima is that in the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. But in order for Mary's Immaculate Heart to triumph, we need to get in the game. We need to be committed and we need to wake up every day with a go, go, go mentality. We need to have and exercise our devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Good news, this Saturday is the first Saturday. So I expect all of you to go to daily mass, pray the rosary, spend those 15 minutes, make that commitment to exercise that first Saturday devotion. We need to make that commitment to pray the rosary daily, at least once a day, if not two or three times a day. We have to put that first. We have to put the weapons God has given us first to wear your brown scapular, to look for opportunities every day to sacrifice. You go out to dinner, instead of having a soda, have a nice tea. Instead of having a nice tea, have a water. You like cream in your coffee, skip the cream. Or just don't have it at all. Some of you need your coffee, I'm just saying. What, what are small ways that you can exercise self-denial every day? That's what these Fatima children did. Seven, nine, ten years old. They ended a war. Three kids ended World War I. What can we do? My brothers and sisters, let us remember that we are under siege. We are under attack and a relentless attack by the most diabolical enemy ever. But our protection comes from above. Our strength is greater. 
our numbers matter not? It is the power of God that conquers evil. And when we engage it, we will be victorious. So let us receive Jesus in Holy Communion today, asking for the grace to always fight for souls, to have a great zeal for souls, and to wake up every day and go to war.